Could the secret to the origins of life lie at the bottom of an alien sea? A look back on recent space missions would sound like something out of a science fiction novel. Think about it. We have a robot exploring the surface of Mars. We landed a probe on a comet. And the Dawn spacecraft checked out an asteroid before flying around a dwarf planet for the first time in human history. So what's next? How about an autonomous submarine exploring the ocean on a distant moon? Saturn has 62 moons, the largest of which is called Titan. It's about half the size of Earth, and it's the second largest moon in our solar system. It's just behind Jupiter's moon Ganymede. But Titan has something that Ganymede doesn't have. In fact, it has something that no other moon in our solar system has, a dense atmosphere complete with clouds. And it has seas, like oceans, just not like the ones we have on Earth. NASA sent the Cassini spacecraft to check out the Saturn system, and it carried with it a little hitchhiker from the European Space Agency called the Huygens Probe, named after a Dutch astronomer in the 17th century who first discovered Titan. The probe sent back images of an amazing, dusty, rocky, yellowish-brown surface. And then in 2007, the Cassini spacecraft itself saw something else that was truly amazing, a sea in the northern polar region of Titan. Now, the sea on Titan is very different from Earth. It's made of hydrocarbons, not water. That's because the surface of Titan is pretty chilly. We're talking negative 180 degrees Celsius, or minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, ethane and methane are liquid, and ice is frozen solid. The methane is actually part of a weather cycle. It rains down from the sky, cuts channels into the landscape, flows into rivers, and ultimately, into seas. We named the sea the Kraken Mare. Release the Kraken. Always wanted to say that. NASA has proposed a mission that would send an autonomous submersible, a robo submarine, to explore the Kraken Mare. It would analyze the hydrocarbons and map out the seabed and, potentially, answer a really puzzling riddle. Where is all that methane coming from? You see, the methane on Titan is exposed to sunlight, which breaks down the methane over time. We're talking millions of years, which is a long time to me and you, but in space terms is no time at all. So how is that methane being replenished? One way would be through organic life. However, most scientists believe that the methane on Titan was formed when the moon itself first took shape. Some of it may be locked away in liquid form surrounded by a cage of water ice. And perhaps this submarine could answer some of those questions. It could also end up telling us things about Titan's climate, its tidal patterns, how waves are formed, and even potentially give us insight on how life originated here on Earth. At the very least, we'll be communicating with a robotic submarine on a distant moon. It's pretty awesome. All right, so first of all, this is not a guarantee. This is just a proposal. It may never happen. And if we want the simplest form of communication, we're going to need to wait for Titan and Earth to be in alignment. You need a direct line of sight, and that's not going to happen again until about 2040. But that gives us plenty of time to develop the technology, to build it, and to test it to make sure it's going to work. I say full steam ahead. All right, I've got a question for you guys this week. Imagine that you are in charge of choosing the next space exploration mission. Where in our solar system would you want to go and why? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, navigate on down to the like button and press that. And then don't forget to subscribe to Forward Thinking. We have new videos out every week. And to get you started, check these out right over here.